G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in New York City. This channel, Stridewise, is five years old and a little behind the scenes here, I'm embarking on a project of refilming a lot of my earlier videos. Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick at stridewise.com because I just got so many things wrong. And one of them is that I used to always knock leather soles. I'd consider them an objective downside to a boot. I put them in the con section of a boot review. Over the years, as I've learned and experienced more in the world of nice footwear, a journey that has included making my own boots from scratch, I've come to really like leather soles. And dare I say it, I prefer leather soles. I was gonna make this video, why leather soles are the best soles, and then I remembered how many people like versus videos, so we're doing leather soles versus rubber soles today. To be clear, I'm, I'm just talking about resolable footwear here, right? Because like, you know, a, a sneaker has a rubber sole, but I wouldn't be comparing like a sneaker with like a proper like leather sole, like Grand Stone boot like this, right? If the construction is the same, otherwise, and it's just, is the sole gonna be leather or is it going to be rubber? That's that's the question here. Not like a, a sneaker is better than boots or something like that because they have like rubber soles. It's like if everything else is the same, they got leather on one end and uh, rubber on the other one. Like let's say you're buying Oak Street's trench boot, which is a really, really good resolable boot and they give the option of a leather sole or rubber for that one. So what should you consider when making your choice? One more note uh, is that in this example, both the rubber and the leather sole look identical when viewed from the side. So like some people will say, I don't want a rubber sole for the aesthetic reason that I don't want like chunky lugs under my boot. Uh, then make it more casual than I'd want it to be. But today there are tons and tons of boots that have flat rubber soles that still manage to be grippy because of recessed lugs. So the most famous example is Day Night. Basically every boot company has either a Day Night sole or their own riff on the Day Night sole like, like Thursday Boot Company does here. Or they've got like a recessed Vibram mini lug here like this white boot. Uh, or like a Mr. Soul, like this benzene boot like that. Like there are, there are a lot of ways to have a rubber sole shoe that looks the same as like a leather one when viewed from the side. You understand what I mean? So first let's talk about why so many people dislike leather soles, including me from five years ago. There are two, the three, I mean, there are, well, I mean, there are three big reasons why people don't like them and two that are justifiable, I think. For guys who are here because they don't really have much experience with a leather sole and don't get how it works, uh, it's not the same kind of leather as this, like the upper here that, make, that you make the boot upper out of. You could not make a boot upper out of the kind of leather you make a sole out of, which is much, much stiffer and usually thicker as well. It's tanned differently to the upper leather, right? Now, leather soles for a long time were the go-to for boots. Like you had leather up top and leather down below. Just as like leather is the default material for the upper, it, it used to be the default material for the sole as well. And that's why many popular boots, including industry defining boots like the Wolverine 1000 Mile, are still made with leather soles, despite many guys thinking leather soles are inferior. Those reasons for thinking they're inferior, number one, they're ugly. A uh, nice rubber sole will look like it did the day you bought it for a very, very long time, and the degradation will be gradual. Leather soles, on the other hand, on day one, look like this. Beautiful. On day two, they look like this. They immediately get scratched to hell. If you're crossing your legs at the office and like showing this to your coworkers, I don't know, some guys find this to be scruffy looking relative to like something like Dana, right? Number two is durability. It's a better reason. Leather will wear down faster than most rubber soles. A prominent exception would be crepe rubber soles like this. These are super soft, but definitely wear away more quickly than leather. Although they're thicker to make up for that, but anyway. A leather outsole will probably need replacing a little more quickly than a rubber outsole, probably. Like it'll, it'll wear down more quickly over time and leather soles are more vulnerable. Like if you step on a sharp, on like a real sharp rock, it can punch right into the outsole. It's unlikely, it might never happen to you, but now and then you'll pull like an extra sharp piece of gravel out of your leather sole and you'll see a dent where that happened. Like it'll, it'll like a little chunk will have been taken out of it. That doesn't happen with rubber. The third reason people don't like leather soles is grip. People see a flat sole like this and they say, that's not grippy enough. I need to be able to hike the Himalayas at a moment's notice. This third reason for hating leather soles, I disagree with. On day one of having leather soles, you should walk very carefully. Hold the handrail when walking down steps. Uh, you, you don't know what could happen. But on day two and up, like once you've picked up all this like scratching and unevenness from wearing your boots, the grip is actually quite good. It doesn't look it like to you, you might not think so. But like if you're like if you're running on smooth tiles for some reason, then yeah, you, you'll want rubber lugs instead if you have that choice. But for the vast majority of guys, the vast majority of uses, leather soles are much grippier than you'd think. Like here on the like on the streets of Manhattan, the ground is concrete and cement, it's not smooth glass, and the roughness of that 
coupled with the roughness of leather soles, it's more than enough to prevent slipping. Like leather soles, they really are grippier than you give them credit for. This gets into something else. In, in the world of boots, there's a real theme of people thinking their lives are more all-terrain than they really are. Like it's one thing if you're buying boots to go hunting in them, right? But most of the guys who value the water resistance of like a, a Norwegian world over a storm world or the grip of rubber over leather, they're not guys who ever need to actually worry about it. Like if leather soles were as slippery on day 100 as they are on day one, it would be a valid concern because they are pretty terrible on that very first day. That's a legit concern. But after that, it's as grippy as 99% of guys need it to be. These boots are not hunting boots. Uh, they're, you're unlikely to work in them. This is the, the diesel boot from Grant Stone. I'd probably call this a fashion boot, but it's a good, it's a supportive boot. It's gonna last a very, very long time. But if you're looking at a boot like this, I think the argument for like, I would rather have like a, a rubber sole doesn't really work because you're simply not wearing this uh, hunting or like trudging around wilderness or that kind of stuff, right? Like this is like just a way to wear a shoe that's like very supportive and stable and uh, durable and it has all the other benefits of boots. But if you're getting a bit like this, uh, I think it's as grippy as you need it to be if you get the leather sole, that's, that's what I think. So those are the, the main reasons why a lot of people don't like leather outsoles. They consider them to be slippery, they consider them to be ugly, and they uh, consider them to be less durable. Like they, they wear down a bit faster than a lot of hard rubbers, right? So why do you like leather soles? In fact, a lot of people who really like boots think they should basically only come with leather soles and not just because people who really like boots tend to be fans of like the history of boots and they like this old fashioned stuff. Like according to Dale at Aerosurfer LV, Grant Stone, this company, the founder initially planned to make all of his boots leather sold, except they just wouldn't sell, at least nowhere near as well as the rubber sold ones. So he had to he had to make compromises and have to sell more rubber sold shoes. But his goal was to just do all leather outsoles because he just believes in their superiority. Here's why. Number one, they are comfortable. Leather soles are soft. They are not soft in the way that EVA shock absorbing foam is or anything. But relative to a lot of hard rubber soles or neoprene or nitrile cork, they are soft underfoot and easy on the knees. They're actually more supportive than you think. Like a lot of folks find it a lot easier to stand all day in leather soles than hard rubber ones. And remember, this is assumed that all other components of the boot are the same, right? Number two, leather out soles are flexible, which is kind of part of that comfort equation, but uh, it, it also means that they break in quite easily compared to a lot of stiff materials. Like a lot of folks, Try to get the best of both worlds by gluing rubber on top of their leather soles, which you, you can do, but you do sacrifice some of that flexibility of the leather outsole when you do that. And you also sacrifice, number three, this is a big one, breathability. This is a big one for guys down south as well in particular, like cowboy boots. Like the reason so many cowboy boots have leather soles is, I mean, it's everything else I've said so far about the benefits of leather soles, yes, but also because leather breathes better in heat than synthetics, typically speaking. This is also why a lot of guys prefer unlined boots as well, despite the fact that when the boot is lined, it's like kind of like a nicer, softer feeling on the foot. But it's still another layer of leather, right? And leather does breathe pretty well, but you know, if all else being equal, you'd rather have one layer of leather between you and the outside world than two layers of leather. Because leather breathes more easily, the boots are less musty. Like leather is more moisture wicking. So at the end of the day, with rubber soled boots, especially if you've been like kind of wearing them hard and getting up to some sweaty activities, rubber soled boots tend to be mustier at the end of the day than leather soled boots because more vapor is able to sort of like escape and get wicked away in leather than with synthetic materials, generally speaking. Um, so to mitigate that, you wanna use like a cedar shoe tree to help suck up the moisture overnight. That's sort of like another video. But yeah, the leather, leather does breathe better and you're gonna have a less musty, humid interior of the boot, which is important to a lot of folks, especially down south. Number four, why people like leather soles, they sound great. You a really nice click clack for a leather sole. Number five, they are antimicrobial. Leather shoes smell less because of the antimicrobialness and the breathability of the leather. Number six, leather soles are great for dancing. Flat, clacky, and easy to swish around on the floor while making contact with it. I am far lighter on my feet when dancing in leather soles. I have an article about leather soles actually uh, that I put in the description below, it's on my website. And in that article, I had multiple commenters like turn up and say like, and don't forget to say that the real benefit of leather soles is that they, they're a lot better to dance in. And that is, that is definitely true. It sounds weird, but I brought them to a wedding recently and it really was a world of difference. Lastly, number seven, uh, they can be cheaper leather soles. Oak Street's leather sole to boot is cheaper than the same one with a day-night sole. Wolverine's 1000 mile is cheaper with a leather sole than in the rubber sole. Sometimes, a lot of time these rubber compounds, especially day-night, are significantly more expensive than uh, slapping on some vegetable tan leather for your outsole as well. 
Oh, uh, hey, one more thing I've got to say benefits a lot of the soles. They are nice and flat. What that means is that dirt and muck and stuff doesn't get dragged into your house as easily as when you have lugs like this, where like, you know, little rocks and bits of mud and stuff can like get, stay stuck in there, right? So even though they're flatter, I get a lot of people prefer that for going outside in like wet weather and the garden and that kind of stuff because it's a lot easier to uh, wipe the shoes off and they're a lot less likely to bring in muck when you're going outside in them. That's another, that's another benefit of leather soles. All right, back to the better shop video. All right, and those, those are my main reasons for liking leather soles more than rubber soles. Obviously it depends on you, uh, and some people do need like really luggy commando type soles, which you're naturally not gonna get with leather. Even here in New York, when it's snowing, even when it's like kind of icy, like I'm, I'm still not like hiking the wilderness. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll step a bit more carefully when it's icy, but like a rubber outsole like this, or even a commando sole, like, it doesn't make that big a difference in my experience. If you're walking on ice, it's gonna be slippery and you're in trouble no matter what the outsole is, unless there's a like Vibram's Arctic Grip outsole, which is specially designed for it. But generally speaking, whether you got lugs in rubber or if you're using a leather outsole, it's you still have a very strong risk of falling on your butt in any case. Uh, getting sidetracked, that's leather outsoles. Tell me your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel, by the way. I got a lot more videos about boots and boot reviews and just apparel and footwear that's gonna last a long time coming up. Uh, I'll see you in the comments.